Hey everyone, it's Marilyn. Welcome back to KK's Quilt Studio. Hey, today we're going to talk about Electric Quilt 8 and Quilt Pro 6. Now, these are both uh, computerized quilting design programs, and I've probably been using Quilt Pro the longest. I've been quilting for a number of years and purchased Quilt Pro first. I thought, wouldn't it be neat to uh, create and see what your quilt is going to look like and probably I was going to use up some of that stash that I had um, and then I went to work for one of the local quilt shops and they asked me to also add electric quilt to the computer classes that I was teaching on digitizing and embroidery software um, quilting software so I bought electric quilt and I own both the programs still today I use both of them for um, their strong points and I really like both of the programs but um, I'm often asked in my classes well what's the difference or which one do you like best and well that's kind of like asking me which one of my children do I like best um, they both have great features, the programs, not, not my kids. Well, my kids do. But uh, I decided to do a video, put them side by side, compare them. So if you're in the market for either one of the programs or own one of the programs and are looking at the other program, um, how do they stack up? And uh, no one's done a video out there to compare them side by side, so I thought I'd help out and throw in my two cents. And that's just what it is. It's it's my two cents. So um, if you feel that there's something that um, I may have missed, now these programs, uh, there's, there's a lot to both programs. They have lots of features and I won't be able to cover them today, all today. And this isn't going to be a tutorial on uh, using both programs. I I have other YouTube videos and classes on my website, KK's Quilt Studio, that you can go and check out. Um, if you you find that I didn't cover something, um, go ahead and note it in the comments below. If it's something that you really like about either of the programs or um, any other comments, maybe you found something useful in this video but do leave a comment um, more about specific specific features like i said can be found on my website and on my here on my channel so don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel click that little bell and uh, you'll get notifications whenever i post anything new so and i'll also post a link below to my website and we'll get started Let's take a look by the numbers. Let's talk about features that each program has. Um, electric quilt, at first it's $239.95. That's what everybody wants to know. Well, how much is it gonna cost? It is available download only. So you don't get a CD, a thumb drive, uh, anything. Um, go to the website and you can download it or you can purchase either from me or from uh, your local quilt shop. You can purchase what you're going to get as a box and it'll have a license number in it. And then you go back to the website and uh, you're able to download the feature. Great thing is that you're supporting your local quilt shop. So I encourage you to do that. Um, it is Windows based or there is a Mac migration kit available for another 25 roundish $24.95. Um, there are 6,700 blocks and then you have the serendipity frames in electric quilt. So um, you can change up every uh, block in the program and come up with your own design. 6,200 fabrics. So you can import your own fabrics as well. If that isn't enough fabric for you, go into your stash, pull out some fabrics that you wanna create a new quilt or quilting project with and scan them 
or take a picture on your phone. Electric Quilt will import, straighten, and square up that fabric for you so that you can use it in the program. They also have free fabric collections, and of course there's uh, manufacturer's websites that you can go and download fabric swatches as well. Um, they have a photo library, six drawing grids with the option to save or create your own grids, your own guidelines. Um, and it was just recently upgraded in uh, November of last year. So um, it's, it's very modern, uses a lot of modern tools. And there are some people out there who, yes, no, they don't like it or they like it. Now on the Quilt Pro side, uh, price is $150, a little bit more affordable. Um, again, download only. Um, it does come in Windows operating system and Mac, only the Mac version is 5. So it is not the version 6 that you get in Windows. Um, it comes with 1500 foundation and piece blocks, 3000 scan fabrics, and uh, like Electric Quilt, if that isn't enough fabric for you or you want to delve into your stash and add it, you can do that as well. Um, it has four drawing grids and they also have a free monthly quilt uh, and fabrics. And then there's the block of the day. Those come uh, four times a week, Monday through Thursday. You can sign up for that whether you own the program or not. Um, so that's another 200, block, 200 plus blocks free plus quilting stencils. Um, and it was upgraded, I'm going to say somewhere around 2013. I think I bought the upgrade in early 2014. So um, Quilt Pro, it probably needs a, another update. But um, that's, that's how they stack up side by side. Next, we're going to jump right in and talk about opening up the both the programs, Electric Quilt and um, navigating around the program once you're in them. Um, I give Gold Star to Electric Quilt. It's a little more fluid, I think. It's easy to navigate quickly to and from the um, one portion or the other, from quilts to fabrics to blocks to homepage back to blocks. Uh, you can navigate easily from one portion of the program to any other portion of the program. Um, some of the people have complained about, well, you can't close or resize the help tool or any of the menus. Well, when you, we get into some of the other pages, I'll, I'll show you how you can slightly reduce some of that. Um, they don't like to have um, quite the assortment of help menus that seems to be available in Electric Quilt. Um, and then Quilt Pro, we're going to go into it, talk about the um, opening screen. I, I think it's kind of redundant. I would like to just get rid of the opening menu. Um, and you can. I'll show you how to do that. They do have an onboard uh, help menu. You can shut that off. It's Quilt Pro Assistant. You can drag and resize the windows according to what's important to you. Um, my screens are going to be a little bit smaller in this video because of um, the video capabilities. They're just easier to see if I, I keep them a little bit smaller. Um, but we're also going to talk about uh, other choices when you go to the file tabs or shortcut buttons. So let's take a look first at EQ. When you open EQ, um, this is the opening screen and you can return to this screen anytime by up here on the little house, that's the home button. That will appear at the top of every, top left hand corner of every page and you can refer to it to click right back to this opening screen. And from here you can go just about anywhere. Um, you can um, go work on the quilt work table or the block work table or the image work table. Um, same down here, the, the, and this is, yeah, I know, kind of redundant. Um, you're going to design quilts, which is work on the quilt work table. Draw blocks, which is the block work table. Work with fabrics, which is the image work table. Um, also, they've had this 
forever and ever is the tip of the day. I've done some YouTube videos on this. Um, tip of the day is just some suggestions to keep you learning or keep you fresh and uh, remember that EQ8 can take you anywhere. Um, contact EQ will take you right back to the website for help and uh, your toolbars along here will stay in all the windows of the program. Of course, you have your file tabs up here. You can access your libraries. You can also accept or access any of these uh, multiple different ways. So let's take a look over at Quilt Pro. This is the opening screen. And if you want to shut it off, don't show this dialog box again. I get this every time I open it up. And you can go from here. You can create a new quilt or a new block and open the quilt gallery, which is um, the quilts that have already been done for you, the quilts that you've saved. Um, open up the block library and you can check this or uncheck it, show the quilting assistant. That is this little area over here. So no matter what um, tool you're using or portion of the workspace you're on, you've got this assistant. It's a good tool to turn on if you're trying to learn the program. You can right away um, see all the help topics and you're able to uh, see how to use the specific tool that you're on. Um, there's also a pop-up tip so you can turn that on and off and then you have to continue. So this is this is the last time you're going to see this screen. Once you click continue you are in um, the screen and you are ready to start. So like I said, you can resize the windows. This is my workspace. I can make it take up all of my screen or I can reduce it if I need to um, work on my Quilt Pro Assistant. If I need to look up something, you can look up something while you're creating. When you want to, um, we're on a block right now, shows up here that we um, clicked on starting a new block. You see that my uh, quilting assistant changes when I hover over anything. If I want to go work on the quilt wizard, again, my assistant changes. Uh, if I hover over the tool, this is where I go to create a new quilt. Um, this is where I go back to the quilt gallery, any items that I've saved, and this is where I go for my block wizard. So um, this is would take me back to this workspace where I'm creating a block. So these three tools are pretty important. If you are starting a new project, you want to create a block or create a quilt. For this portion of the video, I'm going to go ahead and drag or resize my quilting assistant. We're going to move it over here, make my workspace a little bit larger, um, and talk about, let's go to that quilt wizard. And this is the quilt wizard. This is just like um, EQ's work on quilt. Um, this is where we make the choices on what kind of quilt that we're going to um, create. Here are layout types. And um, if we want to allow partial blocks in diagonal quilts or point, uh, quilts set on, uh, set on point, um, how we want to change or set our blocks if we want to um, change, do it like a sampler is a single block setting. If we want to alternate blocks, if every other block, um, there is a sampler um, choice as well. Um, so those, those choices you have right up here, um, you also have the size and this is very similar to the EQ. An extra tab you're going to find is medallion. Now the quilts that I had on the slides at the very beginning, um, these are medallion quilts that I created. Um, and that's where I went in here. We have a medallion tab. In 
Quilt Pro uh, Electric Quilt, it is a little bit different. So you would add a medallion and then you would add your rings. And you see once you click add ring, then you have lots of more choices that light up. Other than that, they're um, grayed out. So a medallion in the Quilt Wizard is a neat choice. Borders. Um, right now it doesn't have borders. Let's light up those tools. So now our quilt has one border. What kind of border? Border widths and all our different choices. We do have a single and sampler border placement choices. So um, for this part, I, I do like the Quilt Wizard in Quilt Pro a little bit better. We also can add sashing, similar choice in electric quilt, binding, um, if you want to add what kind of binding. Now this tool is unique to Quilt Pro. It is not available in electric quilt because this one also calculates how much binding you need. So you see there's straight binding, French binding, and bias binding. All of those are going to require um, different amounts of yardages and Quilt Pro will calculate how much binding you're going to do going to going to need um, in electric quilt all you can do is add a quarter inch border to your quilt your quilt design but you're not going to get any yardage calculation now you know that um, these are going to involve folds um, if we did just straight binding there it tells you it's going to need how many inches of binding and at what how wide and here's where you set your width so that's kind of a neat feature and then you have layers um, and i'll show you where layers are um, enabled in quilt pro so that's our quilt wizard let's pop over to electric quilt and let's see how they set up their quilt work table and we have across this top we have tabs for a new quilt and of course here we have our layouts just like we had in Quilt Pro. Here um, our layout in number of blocks, what size are the blocks and sashings. Here is our borders tab. We have Quite a selection of borders and you can just keep clicking over and find more borders of course to add a border um, it already has one border added to it automatically by default you can choose to add more or delete or you can insert a border that takes us to our design page you have blocks by default and than your print and export. So everything for involved in creating a new quilt is right here and you can go back at any time say from um, design to new quilt maybe you want to change the layout or you want to add more blocks to your quilt you just simply return to the screen in order to check that out. So in summary, electric quilt on the new quilt work table, we've got several quilt variations um, that can be saved to one project file and I um, forgot to talk about that. Um, here is our sketchbook and add to sketchbook so we can have several variations of one quilt. Maybe you have different colorations of a quilt that you want to save. Um, if you have an all blue quilt or an, um, then you want to add that to your sketchbook and you want to create now an all red quilt but with the same blocks you just want to see which color you like it in best you can add it to your sketchbook and then your project sketchbook is available to see the same quilt in different color variations that is not available in Quilt Pro. You can't say more than one quilt to a project file. 
but blocks and fabrics can be a sa uh, saved and associated with a project. Um, you have a choice of docked large tools or tips and or small. You have, let's see, start that over again. You have the choice of dock large tools and tips, or you have a choice of small tools and no tips. So you can change this screen. Um, let's go to the design. When you are in the workspace under the design, go up here to file and down to preferences and under display. Yes, you can change this screen to use small tools in the palette. I'll show you what difference that makes. So you can, um, if you know your tools, you don't need an explanation of them. Of course, if you hover over them, it tells you what those tools are. If they're a little too big, you can always reduce them. Um, you can, these are default blocks that um, open up in every new quilt project. You can also choose to turn those off and only have the quilt blocks that you want or the fabrics that you um, have used in your project. So there are several variables. Um, you can always change those under the preference tools. There are more work table options here under the settings. So you have a couple places to choose where you want to turn things on and off. Under the Quilt Pro 6, the um, you have snapshots. I didn't show you uh, that. Let's go back there. Here you can take a picture of that little camera icon of the project that you're working on. Maybe you want to remember how you had something originally before you go back and make changes, uh, being that you can't keep multiple different designs. All you have are those temporary snapshots. A um, little bit more design choices within the quilt wizard, like medallions that I talked about. Um, you can add the binding choices and it's included in your yardage. Uh, block placement choices, your borders. You can create borders um, of your own liking. Maybe you want to do a friendship braid or um, some uh, distinct border you'd like to create and use it over and over again in your different creations. So you can create and save borders to the library. And it does have a larger design area because you can shut all those other tools off and only work in the workspace and the toolbars will float or dock and in electric quilt 8 your toolbars are basically docked so who wins here with the new quizzer, quilt new quilt wizard or work table um, pretty much an even draw it depends on the project that i'm working on um, what outcome i'm looking for so i give them both good points for um, great setup and lots of tools to work with. And again, according to the project I'm working on, the type of quilting I'm going to be doing, um, I would use one or the other. So and that's, that's why I have both programs. Um, that's why I own both of them. So you decide what's important to you, what kind of uh, quilts you like to create, and which one's going to give you more bang for your buck. Next, we're going to talk about drawing uh, new blocks. Um, Quilt Pro does have a block wizard and it's a little, well, it's a lot different than um, drawing or designing a block in an electric quilt. It does have a free floating toolbar and actually you're drawing shapes or drawing patches um, and uh, there is a round arranger, twister, magic mirror to um, turn around your creations. Those I use primarily for applique and it does have a searchable block library. So let's flip over to Quilt Pro and here you see I have my 
floating toolbar. I can drag it anywhere I want. And these are basically your design patches. So if I want to create a um, four patch, I simply drag and snap into place. You see my patch becomes white. It hides the um, outer or the grid lines behind it. So if I want to create a half square triangle, simply up in the corner and drag and then back the other way. And I've created it backwards. So I'll create one on side of it. Let's try this way. Over and drag over. You just have to remember which direction you're going in. And then from the bottom toolbar, I'll bring that up. We can assign colors. Or you, your colors are down here. So we can do is our, use our paintbrush, select a color and color if you want to use solids. If you're wanting to create fabrics, click on your fabric tool and assign a color by clicking on the fabric and then clicking on the patch. can close my fabric toolbar and these all are tools. Um, these are tools for drawing. You get curves and lines and that's how usually you create in um, quilt, electric quilt. You also have circular or ellipse shapes. So lots of different drawing tools. And I'll be doing some videos later on how to create uh, blocks with all these shapes. But that's basically how you're going to create a block in Quilt Pro. So back to our slide, just to review um, all the things we've gone over. You, I have a picture here of all the different shapes you can create. You can also do text right on a block um, in electric quilt. You can, if, uh, you can only use text in the uh, quilt work table. And uh, if you were going to make a label or something, that's where it's uh, useful to use text. And in both programs, you're going to use text that um, come from fonts that are loaded into your computer program. So next, let's keep moving along. We're going to talk about drawing a new block in Electric Quilt. Um, layout's great, but uh, I do find it a little bit confusing. Uh, you have to remember which style you need to create the block that you want. So you kind of have to envision your block and think about um, how it's going to be constructed, if it's going to be pieced, applique, or a little bit of pieced and applique. So that can, um, that can change what you're going to be able to do in that different style. So under the pieced menu, you have the easy draw and the poly draw. Under the applique, you can either design a motif in, within a block, um, so you're going to have a background, or you can design just the applique or the motif design itself. Now, if you're going to do piece and applique, um, this is for more complicated things, maybe like for paper piecing, for um, mariner stars, something that comes to mind. Um, these are your choices, easy draw plus applique or poly plus applique. So those are your choices. You don't have any um, toolbars in floating toolbars in electric quilt. Um, again, those text tools are only found in the quilt wizard, um, but you do have a searchable block library. All your um, creations, your appliques, um, designs, drawings can be changed with the wreath maker, star maker, stencil maker, or po posy maker. 
Um, those are extra tools that are in EQ and again depends on what you're doing and what where you're trying to go with your next quilting design. I like to play around with wreath maker and stencil maker and see what kind of designs I can come up. Stencil maker is a great option for creating quilting designs. So I'd say just the hardest part of this is remembering um, what kind of block you're trying to achieve and where the tools that you need are located. That that seems to be a confusing item for me. So let's open up Electric Quilt and I'll show you uh, we're on the block work table right now. Remember I said there's that ribbon from the home page and you can go um, click on that tab and go right into a block work table. And these are the choices, your pieced, um, piece selection, these are your choices, applique, these are your choices, piece and applique, and there are more choices. Um, serendipity are uh, changes that you can make to an existing block in the EQ library or um, the block that you've designed. So there are several different choices. Um, this is fun to play around with and when you're learning the program, the different things that you can do with a program totally changes how you look at a block or um, how it might be interpreted using those serendipity tools. So you can have a, would we say 6,000 blocks and how many different tools and how many different ways can you create a new block from the serendipity. To draw a new block in Electric Quilt, let's click on the New Block tab and let's start with Piece Block, the Easy Draw, and it's just that. It's lines and arcs, so when you have your little pencil clicked and highlighted in blue, you can draw lines down and across. If you want to create a block, simply by that, just make sure that your lines cross. I'll use the edit tool because I can't color in something that's not um, joined together. So I'll cross that line over. You can cross over. I have my snaps on. We'll talk more in another class about drawing blocks, but now I've done a um, half square, half triangle, I guess. I don't know what you call these. Let's go to color and color that in just grabbing some of my default fabrics with my paintbrush and there's there's a block easy as that if you can't find it in the library you need to redraw it that is how quick you can create your own block let's go to the applique and do some drawing no we don't want to save our book our our block and let's try um, new drawing. Now you see here are shapes similar to what you have in EQ. So if you click on those, all those shapes are available, lots more than what's available in EQ. And again, you have your Posy um, Maker and Stencil Maker. We don't have time in this video to go over all those, um, but you have ellipse tools, rectangular tools. So lots of tools. Go back to shapes. And we'll draw something simple and then use our star maker has lots of starts with the star you can change the number of points using entering from your keyboard or just dragging on the slider you can change the size of the center you can make the points flat around increase the point size you can do all sorts of things, make all sorts of shapes. So when I'm drawing applique, I love to use some of the tools in um, EQ if it's not too complicated. I'm going to go ahead and add that to our project. So you can see quickly you can create lots of fun different shapes with the electric quilt. There's lots of other drawing program or drawing tools in the other portions of the program so just play around with it and see what you get. 
So many, many choices under the draw new blocks. And um, again, it's kind of a toss up between um, Electric Quilt 8 and drawing a new block in Quilt Pro. Um, it depends on where you want to go, what you're trying to create. Again, I like to use both tools. Next, let's talk about printing. Uh, we have Electric Quilt printing and um, these are some of the features so we'll go right over into the electric quilt program and let's bring up that basket i have clicked on the library tool and under the classic piece here we have all sorts of bas uh, baskets drawn up and i'm going to select this one and we can click that block that's already in our library and edit to block work table. There is our block and we want to go to print and export and here we have some choices if we want to print that pattern we can print the block, we can print templates, we can print foundation pieces, um, rotary cutting, cutting chart, and um, printer setup. I'm going to change our preferences back to large okay and there you see now it says what they are let's go ahead and print block here we have the name of the block the default size of the finished block is eight inches um, if we'd set this in a quilt, we could print it at the size. We could change that. We can also change by clicking custom block size um, to 8, 9 inches, whatever size block that you're going to be making. You can outline, do a stencil as an applique, and you can also preview. So you know you have choices in under the print menu you get a preview and then we'll just close out of there if i go back to our slide um, they are going to give you variations they'll give you height this is if we were doing a strip cutting um, they'll show you the cutting diagrams what size they need to be both width and height and how many you need there is also a fat quarter calculation electric quilt if you're just working with fat quarters um, how many fat quarters you need or how much fabric within that fat quarter that it's going to um, require now I will tell you if if it can't calculate and easily um, um, an easy reference like 45 degrees 30 60 degrees some of those pieces it'll it will be missing and they don't tell you um, but they're going to be needed as templates so if you don't see all your pieces listed up here uh, you're just going to have to know that you need to go print a template in addition to uh, printing off this fabric chart of what you need now this one has more common angle so it is going to print these um, flower petals from the basket under quilt pro our printing choices um, i do have to give the gold star here to quilt pro it does does give you a little more information on um, what you're going to be cutting i've brought up a similar basket here um, they're going to tell you if a piece is missing and it may need to be cut by template so over here it says print template to cut so um, it doesn't doesn't assume that you know which which angles these are in electric quilt it tells you if there are common angles that you can cut but if they're going to be weird and weird angles um, or even common angles quilt pro will go ahead and tell you print a template um, it does have a fudge factor. I like that. When calculating yardage, I like to have a little bit more uh, fabric when you go to the store in case you make a mistake. Um, 
It, like I said, it does have binding choices and calculations. We talked about that earlier. And printing, it also does back, backing calculation for your quilt. So let's go over to Quilt Pro and bring up our um, block in the from the block library. I'm in, on the block work table and I looked up that name. I entered it in the search bar, the desert basket and let's search because it doesn't have a basket folder um, and there's our box our our block and it tells us where it's located so that's kind of handy and let's open it up to our work table had to select it okay and there it is and then to print you simply use the printing icon and then you get a choice of what you need to print. If you need to print templates, you need to print yardage for that one little block or to print the block information as I have shown on the slide. So printing is pretty easy in Pro 6. Uh, Quilt Pro 6 gives you lots of information, tells you how many triangles to cut from a square. If you have a um, half square triangle that that'll tell you there um, it tells you how many pieces how how high how big they are your fabric strips need to be 44 inches long you can change that so um, like I said I give quilt pro 6 the gold star for the printing I, I do like their printing information better it's important for when you're um, writing patterns or just when you're uh, a quilter uh, that needs to know, okay, how, how much do I need um, and how, how to lay this out. So that's another valuable tool. Let's go back to Quilt Pro for one second. I brought up a quilt and I'm going to show you one thing I really, really love about Quilt Pro. And they're under the quilt I'm going to quilt under the quilt tab. I'm going to calculate yardage. And this will bring up our tool for our, all our choices. And I'm going to say show yardage results. Now, when I click on this patch and then show cutting layout, this will show me how to lay it out in the different widths and variations of fabric to get the most out of my fabric. Now, isn't that cool? If there were one thing that I'd buy a program for is this, is how to lay out um, for that one color and uh, how to get the best bang for my fabric dollar, how to lay out that tool. Isn't that neat? So that's probably why Quilt Pro gets my gold star for printing and the variables that are available in its printing. Of course, under this is the rotary cutting charts that you print out. Um, it'll tell you cut three strips, one and seven eighths inch wide, and then cut 49 squares. So I don't have to figure that out like I do in Electric Quilt. Quilt Pro again comes to the rescue and helps me lay out or um, when I'm doing strip quilting, cutting strips and sub cutting them into blocks, it tells me when I'm writing a pattern. That's a big help because it'll tell you how many strips and I'll have to do the math and how many rectangles that I'll get out of those 18 strips. So two two cool features from Quilt Pro and that's why again they get the gold star. Here is our cutting chart from Electric Quilt and um, you see it just gives me numbers of patches um, and my fabrics so I'd have to refer back to my block printout um, so it does leave a little bit behind. This is the calculation for an overall quilt. Um, how many patches I need to make the whole quilt um, pieces from the blocks but um, again I have to use two pieces of information and put them together and 
um, have to think. So sometimes I don't like to think. It gets way too complicated. Next, we're going to talk about um, exporting artwork or exporting images. Um, electric quilt. Um, it does okay. I get bitmaps, JPEGs, TIFFs, PINGs, and GIFs. So um, they do have a new feature I kind of like. You got a new direct share to uh, Facebook if you want to share with family, friends, and other quilters what you're creating. Um, you can post uh, pictures of your creations done in electric quilt straight to Facebook. Quilt Pro. Um, I have I have to lean a little bit more towards them. They do have um, images that you can export as an SVG file. Um, I like those because I do also cutting machine work and um, saving images in a few more formats is always handy. Um, it allows for interaction with other programs. So um, they're they're both about equal. I, I can work around not having an SVG file in Electric Quilt, but hey, Electric Quilt, if you're listening, it sure would be nice. Next, we're going to talk about support. Um, Electric Quilt is going to get my gold star here. Um, Quilt Pro support, it's, it's good. Um, I've asked questions to the customer service or technical boards, and I did get a very quick response there. Um, always willing to help and so back and forth with emails I can usually solve my problem um, again there's that onboard quilting assistant or quilt pro assistant in the um, that little window you can turn that on and off um, that that is like having somebody on side of you that's looking up your task in the user's guide um, you do get block of the day quilt of the month so you get those 200 extra blocks a year um, they have some very short simple tutorials um, on their website a lot of pdfs uh, from older versions of the programs and um, they're they've just begun starting to do some very short youtubes um, the help tab though their selections go i i don't know where they go they don't really go anywhere um, sometimes their links, they're, they need to work on their links. Um, Electric Quilt, on the other hand, like I said, it gets a gold star. Their support is excellent because they've got an extensive website, um, a blog, lots of available training, YouTube, um, support materials. You've got add-ons and books and fabrics and downloads. Um, all sorts of extra little things that you can use. Um, then the blog, the Do You EQ, they have challenges, a um, lot of fun to participate in, and good good chance um, to learn short, simple lessons. So it's a learning opportunity. Um, EQ does have a larger community of um, users, uh, a big network. So uh, people that are experienced or inexperienced is uh, probably some person out there that can help you and answer your questions. Um, the help tabs navigate straight to the website so um, you know where to go. You can type in a question in the search bar and it will give you the answer. So um, Electrical's got a good, good support network. Um, Quilt Pro does need to pick it up a little bit. But remember, both programs together, you do need a knowledge of quilt making, um, quilt making and how to construct. So if you're a beginner quilter, it's going to be very hard to learn electric quilt and quilt pro and get a lot out of it. You do need to be a intermediate to advanced quilter to take advantage of many of the features that both programs have to offer. It does not write the pattern or tell you how to construct it. Now, Quilt Pro gives you that cutting layout. I, I, yeah, that's that's my big bonus points there. But um, it's not going to tell you that you know you need to put those edges together and trim seams or press seams which direction. Um, so you do need to know how to make quilts. It is important. 
And last but not least, um, there's lots of help. Contact me um, if you have any questions or um, like I said, if you have something else that you want to uh, tell everyone about why you, li why you like EQ8 um, or Quilt Pro, why you like it better, I've covered just a smidge, of just the surface of the features that are available and how these programs both work. Um, I'd like to hear from you what your favorite feature is, um, what you've learned. Um, I can be contacted through any of these social media groups. I have a message board, um, also a blog, The Digital Quilting Bee, and a face group, Facebook group, The Digital Quilting Bee. You're welcome to join in and share with us what you've been working on or what you'd like to learn about. Um, also, remember my other videos here on the KK's Quilts YouTube channel. Be sure and subscribe. Go to my website, check out my classes, and drop me a line by email at kksews at kksquiltingstudio.com. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it gave you a lot of valuable information. If you are thinking about buying either one of the programs, or maybe, like me, you want to use both programs because it depends on what kind of uh, quilting creation you're trying to make and which program is stronger in the uh, quilts that you like to make. So until we meet next time and uh, join me for any of my upcoming YouTubes and classes, and until then, I wish you happy quilting.